use every single day. However, we still do a lot of things incorrectly. And where I come from in the, in the US, there used to be a job description, a job title called a data processing professional. My older brother did data processing before I went to college. By the time I graduated college, data processing wasn't anything anybody wanted to say they did. It, it wasn't cool to be a data processor anymore. People wanted to be software architects, chief engineers, uh, something with a really fancy title. But at the end of the day, we are really all data processing professionals. Uh, we have applications that we work on and we develop and we think uh, the application is what it's all about. But it's really about the data underneath the application and the data processing that goes along with that. So we're going to take a look at a, a couple of examples of data processing and things we do wrong frequently. One of the things we do incorrectly quite often is underestimate complexity. We look at something and say, ooh, that's going to be a very simple, a very small change. And we just run forward and implement this change. This is a, a picture from the internet. We have a store called IKEA. They make furniture. A lot of my furniture came from IKEA but it comes in five million pieces. We have to assemble it by hand. And, and many times, it looks very simple. You, you get the piece of furniture will look like this podium. You'd be amazed that it takes two weeks to assemble a podium from Ikea, because they have so many little screws and magic locks and ways to do them. And many times, their, their directions look a little bit like the, uh, the picture, the, the graphic off to the side where you look at it, you just you can't figure out what to do. It looks really simple, but under the covers, it's really quite complex. So here was uh, an example I found on the internet. Somebody has an application. This application already exists. The business people have looked at it and said, this is a very good application. I like this. The users can come in, they can write a review about things. This is, this is a well-developed application. But we'd like to make a change. We're going to want to use SMS, text messaging, to send these reviews out to people's cell phones. And so we want to make a very small change, which is to limit the length of a review in our application to 140 characters because we want to use SMS to do this, and that's a tiny change. The business would come to a developer and ask for this. The developer would say, hmm, that's a very small change. It'll take me about 30 seconds. You can have it later this afternoon. But there's a lot of things involved in making this small change. So we have this new requirement. We want to limit the length of review to 140 characters so that we can use text messaging. All we have to do is find a code snippet somewhere out there on the internet, call it that interweb thing, and plop it in. We'll find some JavaScript to stick on this review page that when the end user is typing in, will prevent them from <laughs> typing more than 140 characters. Don't need to design this. Don't need to sit down and think about this. It's just too small of a change. We'll just do it right now. There's a lot of things you need to think about, though. What happens when the text exceeds 140 characters that the user wants to type in? A couple of things to think about. What happens to existing data? Now, I have that text in blue, and I'll come back to why it's in blue at the end of this section. But just remember, the blue text is a little bit different from the black text. But what happens to existing data? You already have an application that's running, right? So you have a database that has data, and this rule never existed before. So you have some data that exists that exceeds 140 characters. What happens to the existing user interface? As the end user is typing, 
do you just silently truncate their data? They hit 140 characters, they just don't let any more in. Do you display an error message? For every character they type over 140, we put up a little message that says, you know, you can't type more than that. If you do display an error message, is this going to be a modeless or a modal window? Is it going to pop up for every character? Is it going to make a beep? Is it going to have an OK button on it? What if the end user cuts from one application 170 characters and pastes it into your text window? Is that dialogue going to come up 30 times? I've seen that happen. That's very annoying when you exceed somebody's length limit and you just say, for every character you type in, I'm going to put up the little window. And you click it, OK, 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 over and over again. What is the explanation given to the user? One that they'll comprehend and believe to be true. Who will write that message? I fly on uh, United Airlines a lot. And I know English may not be your first language, but I use the United Airlines on my mobile phone. And I used an application that I've been using forever. And I typed in something wrong and I hit enter. And this is the error message that I got back. Uncorn error instead of unknown error. Please try agent later instead of again. So who's going to write this message in a way that makes sense to your end users, that doesn't make them mad, that doesn't upset them? What is the error message style? Are you going to come up and invent a brand new way to do this? So already, we've got a lot of things to think about. And we're not done yet. Where do we want to do the data validation? Should we do it in the client application? Probably. Do we need to do it in the database? Yes, we need to do it over there too. Because people can disable JavaScript, for example. So if we were using JavaScript and they turned it off, they might be able to try type in more than 140 characters. So we want it to be in both places, client and server, to avoid a bad end user experience. And besides, if we did not do it in the client, it would lead to a non-scalable application. We don't want every error making it from the client application up to the database, up to the data server, for the simple reason that the database will have to reject a lot of transactions. If we can reject them early at the client side, we'll be able to do more work in our database. So we will do this client side validation, but the database will still enforce this because we can turn off that JavaScript. Who's going to code this JavaScript? Most browsers do support JavaScript, but they support slightly different variations of it. So who's going to write this JavaScript so that it works in Internet Explorer versions 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, and 11, and 12, Firefox, Chrome, uh, Safari, all of the different browsers out there. Who's going to do that? Who's going to test that? It's getting to be a larger and larger change. What about usability? If I was an end user typing, as I type on my cell phone to send a text message, it tells me how many characters I've typed in and how many characters I have left to go. That's real nice. We'd sort of probably want that. Uh, so we might need to implement a counter. There's more code. We could just find one on the internet who does the testing of it? If you find some code, who makes sure that it works every place that you want to implement it? Who verifies that it's not infected with some other bad code? You know, if you download a JavaScript library, it might have 10,000 lines of code in it. You want one function. It's got lots of support functions in there. What do they do? Who's going to go through and verify and validate all this? Do you just stop accepting characters at 140? What do you do in the user interface to make it obvious that something's going to happen when you hit 140 characters? What about that existing data again? Some more text in blue. We have data that's over 140 characters. How does the new user interface display that, edit that, allow the user to interact with that, how do you explain to the new end users why their 